gonna really go um, too intense on the asana side. Um, but you know, if you want to mix it up or do something, you know, um, a little bit more intense than what I'm offering, you should feel free, or you can at any time take child's pose. But you know, the point of um, our yoga practice is really just uh, a chance to turn inwards. That's how you know I really personally have gotten a lot out of yoga. It's really been through um, how the asanas are a way to explore kind of our our inner world, right? And so depending on how intense you want it to be is how deep you want to go into your inner world. So it's totally up to you. Um, and, you know, I just want to say that um, it, it, one thing that really guides me also, and hopefully this is um, useful for you, um, is this concept of uh, stira and sukha, which are Sanskrit words for effort and ease. And in each posture, we're looking to find that balance between effort and ease. So if something is too easy, like tune in and note, how can I bring more activation? Um, you know, how can I be more grounded or how can I be more engaged in this posture? And similarly, if you're pushing yourself too hard and, you know, um, to the point of almost injuring, then we want to back off um, a little bit and, you know, find that sweet spot um, of balance between stira and sukha. And, you know, one thing that is, um, I was just, you know, playing with my kids outside and they love the swing, right? And one um, just super cool, I guess, lesson that really stuck with me from my yoga teacher um, in thinking about the, the momentum um, of a swing, um, going back and forth, um, you know, force taking it upwards and gravity taking it back down. But there's a sweet moment at both sides where for a split second, you become completely still. And it's that perfect balance between momentum taking you up and gravity bringing you back down. And it happens on both sides, but if you're closing your eyes, you're not going to notice it. But I invite you in each um, posture that we do today to try and find that sweet, spot of total stillness. Um, and that is kind of a window to peek inside and see what's going on. So um, I just wanna start off by acknowledging uh, a couple things. So that we are uh, in the San Francisco Peninsula and in, in the East Bay where you are, we're living on unceded Ohlone territory. And um, we here are providing our respect to the First Nations whose land we're living on and recognize their rights as indigenous people. And I also wanna just give spiritual lineage acknowledgement that all of these practices come from India. And I am so grateful to my teachers who taught me everything that I know and were able to share. And I thank all of my teachers, teachers, uh, and teachers, 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 all the way back thousands of years who made this practice possible for us. So um, why don't we go ahead and get started and um, you can come into a comfortable seated position. Um, and this is, um, I'm using a block, um, but it's totally up to you. Um, generally like having the knees elevated above, um, the hips elevated above the knees is, um, makes you a little bit more comfortable as we're sitting in meditation, uh, especially for long periods of time, but we won't be too long today. Um, and so I invite you to soften the gaze or close the eyes, uh, whichever you feel comfortable with today. And begin to notice the quality of your thoughts. And begin to notice the quality of yourself in the physical body. And notice what your breath feels like, the quality of the breath this afternoon. So these three anchor points help us to maintain awareness throughout the practice. And begin now to become completely aware of only the breath. The breath is 
almost imperceptible to us all day long, but it's there doing the work, even though we don't ask it to, same thing with the heart, all of the parts of our uh, physical body that operate without us asking. Let's notice only the breath now. Entering through the nose, the physical sensation within the nasal cavity and as it travels down into the lungs. And at some point, that inhalation turns to an exhalation. Notice the air leaving the body. Each breath is a new beginning for us to practice our yoga. As the mind begins to soften and we become more aware, more present in this moment, letting go of our busy day that we had, not worrying about what's to come on the other side of this practice. It will be there when we're done. So be here now. Yoga is a way for us to heal, to become more whole. And yoga in Sanskrit, one of the meanings is to yoke, to bring together things which are separated. So in, in the West, we believe incorrectly that the mind is separate from the body, which is separate from the soul. And our practice of yoga helps to bring unity within. And this separation extends even outside of the body. There are separations that our society imposes on us, whether we like it or not. But our, again, our yoga practice can help us to bring unity even to the outside world. So for us today, I invite you to choose an intention for yourselves to bring unity to something that is separated in your own life or in your own world. This is our sankalpa or our intention. Okay, you can begin to slowly flutter the eyes open. And if you do have blocks, you should feel free to grab them. And again, it's totally optional up to you if you'll use them or not. Uh, but go ahead now and lift, uh, bring the right hand onto the ground and reach the left hand overhead for a side body stretch. Feel rooted in the left sitting bone and reach the left fingertips, inhale, exhale. Breathe in and set the left hand down and bring the right hand up and over to the left side. Breathe in. Feel rooted again in the right sitting bone. Notice the breath, calming the body and calming the mind. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, reach, and exhale, bring the right hand down. And now we'll do a gentle twist. So bring the left hand to the right knee and the right hand behind you. Sit up straight and tall, rooted in both sitting bones. Belly button towards the spine and twist open gently to the right. Inhale, and exhale, deepen the twist. Breathe in. 
and let it go. And we'll twist back to the center and then over to the left. So right hand on the left knee, left hand on the ground behind you. Inhale, sit up straight and tall. Exhale, twist to the left. So the gaze can be to the side wall or behind you. Activate the core. Soften the shoulders down the back. Elongate the neck and gently twist a little bit more. Inhale. Exhale. And come back to center. We'll do some seated cat cow now. So inhale, lift the head up and arch the spine. Relax the shoulders down the back. Breathe in and exhale, cat pose. So drop the head, round the back, belly button towards the spine, chest towards the chin. Inhale up. Cow pose. Exhale, cat pose. Lower the head, chin towards the chest, round the spine, belly button towards the spine. Do some of these now on your own, inhaling, linking the breath to movement, slowly articulating each vertebrae of the spine. There's no rush here. It's a chill Sunday afternoon, just getting present in the now. Inhale up. And exhale, cat pose. And hold it here and reach the hands out in front of you, palms facing up and bring the hands together. Bow the head so the chin is towards the chest and offer now your intention, your sankalpa. What is your yoga for today? Inhale. Breathe in. And come back to neutral. Inhale and raise the hands up, palms facing each other. And now flip the palms outwards and place one palm on top of the other. This is gonna give a lot of activation into the shoulders. Feel rooted in the sitting bones, belly button towards the spine, press the hands together, really active in the arms and remember to breathe, inhale. Exhale. And let's flip the palms, leave them up in the air. Just place the other palm on top of what was. Inhale. Exhale. Press the hands together, reach the fingertips up, activate the core. Inhale and gently bring the hands down. Let's come to tabletop position. So wrists directly underneath the shoulders, knees directly underneath the hips and press the palms into the mat, press the shins into the mat. The spine is neutral. The neck is long, gaze is directly down into the ground. Inhale, exhale. If you want a little bit more activation here, press the hands and the shins into the ground and without moving them, draw them towards each other. So isometrically, bring the hands towards the shins, inhale. You should feel a strong activation in the core. Breathe in and let it go. One more time, inhale. Exhale. Okay, soften that. Extend the right leg long, lift the right foot up and extend the left fingertips long in front of you. So you're balancing on your right hand and your left shin. Reach the left fingertips, press the right foot into an invisible wall behind you. The leg is strong and activated. Core is Heating up as well, inhale, exhale, reach. Inhale, and set it down. 
Let's do the other side. So raise the right hand up, extend the right fingertips long, lift the left leg and press the sole of the left foot into an invisible wall behind you. Inhale, exhale. Breathe in, reach the fingertips, push that invisible wall with the left foot, exhale. One more breath cycle, inhale, and set it down. Really good job. We're gonna build on this uh, from here. So if that was feeling good for you, hang out there. But if you wanna do a little bit more, extend the right foot and extend the left hand long. Now bend the right knee and reach behind and grab the top of the right foot with your left hand. Tiger pose, inhale. Press the right foot into the left hand, but hold it in place with that left hand. Feel an activation in the spine. Breathe in. Exhale. Inhale. And set that down. Let's do the other side. Extend the right hand, extend the left foot. Bend the left knee, reach behind and grab the top of the left foot with the right hand. Kick the left foot back, but hold it in place with the right hand. Inhale. Exhale. So in this asana and in every asana again, we're trying to find that balance between effort and ease. And in this case, try to find that balance between the downward energy of the left hand and the right shin and the upward energy of the left foot and the right hand. Inhale, find that perfect balance point where suddenly everything becomes perfectly calm. And exhale it down. Let's come back into child's pose. Give the little release to the back. So the knees can be together, hands out, palms down in front of you and go ahead and let the tummy go. Nobody's looking, just let it hang down, rest the forehead gently on the mat and feel the support of the earth underneath you. As though the ground is rising to support you. And nestle in just for a couple more breath cycles. Inhale. So slowly come on up and find yourself in hero pose or Varasana pose. So you're uh, sitting um, either directly onto the feet or you could have the feet um, just on either side of uh, the hips. And actually um, come back together and, and bring the feet together underneath you. Uh, bring the hands in prayer position in front of the heart and gently twist over to the right, belly button towards the spine. And you can enjoy this twist or bring the left elbow to the outside of the right thigh, hands still in prayer position. So a child's pose with a twist. So press the right hand into the left hand. Find that twist, feel rooted in the ground. Imagine an invisible string on the top of your head, elongating the spine and gaze can be over to the side or slowly roll the head up towards the ceiling. Inhale, exhale. All right, slowly come on up, come back to center. And now keep the hands in prayer position and twist over to the left. And hang out here if this is feeling like a good twist for you. Or you can bring the right elbow to the outside of the left thigh and press the hands into each other, especially the left hand into the right hand. See if you can get a little bit more articulation and twist in here. Lay the head back slightly, gaze is up, 
to the side wall or maybe reaching up towards the ceiling. Press, inhale, and exhale, come out of that. Really good job. Lay the hands uh, long in front of you. We're coming into puppy pose. So bring the knees underneath the hips, keep the hips high and reach the hands forward, forward, forward down the mat. And then slowly lower the forehead down onto the mat if it reaches, if not, it's all good. But press the finger pads into the mat. The arms are straight and strong. Lift up the head and lengthen the spine and then slowly lower the head down again, finding a little bit more length. Press the hands into the mat. Inhale. Exhale. And our breath is the Ujjayi breath. So inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth with sealed lips, making a gentle ocean sound with the back of the throat. This is a very warming breath. So we're lighting the lamp of inner fire and the lamp of inner knowledge. Inhale, exhale. All right, tuck the toes and keep the hands pressing into the mat. The arms are strong and come up into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. So we're growing up our puppy. We were in puppy pose and now we're in downward facing dog. So go ahead and work out your dog. You can bend one knee and bend the other. The heels reach towards the ground. The feet are slightly pigeon toed. Lift up the kneecaps, squeezing the quadricep onto the thigh bone, hips lift into the air, the spine elongates, inhale, exhale and come back down to your puppy pose. So bring the knees slowly down to the ground, the forehead gently onto the ground. Keep the hands pressing into the mat, strong and activated. Tuck the toes again, grow the puppy into the Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Up with the hips, down with the heels. Inhale. Exhale, puppy pose. Inhale, downward facing dog. Exhale, puppy pose. Inhale, downward facing dog. And exhale, puppy pose. Come back into child's pose. Oh my gosh, my shoulders are really active. <laughs> Whew. Find your breath. Inhale. Again, feel the calm of the earth underneath you, supporting you. So much in this crazy world today is knocking us off our balance and we're moving all a million different directions. So enjoy feeling small and supported and resting. All right, slowly lift the chest up halfway, halfway and then just slide the hands down. You're gonna come all the way to lying down on your front and come into cobra pose. So the hands are down the middle of the chest, squeeze the elbows together, inhale, lift the head and lift the chest, elbows squeeze together, zip up the legs, press the top of the feet into the mat and feel an activation in the spine, inhale. Exhale, bring the one cheek down to the mat, take a quick rest, inhale, cobra pose again, Lift the head, lift the chest, squeeze the elbows, zip up the legs, the top of the feet, press into the mat, and then draw the hands back in space isometrically. Bring the, without moving the hands, but just draw the hands closer 
towards the feet. Feel a greater activation in the spine. Breathe in and exhale it down. Other cheek rests on the mat. Take a quick rest. And again, inhale, baby cobra pose. Lift the head, lift the chest, elbows squeeze together. Breathe in and let it go. One last breath cycle, inhale and let it go. Extend the arms long in front of you and set the forehead down. We're gonna transition into locust pose. So some more um, back strengthening work. So go ahead now and lift the head, lift the chest, lift the arms and lift the feet. Ha rotate, um, so there's external rotation in the shoulders. And so the palms are facing outwards. And now slowly bring the arms down by the side, keeping the arms long and have them end up by your side. So you're like Superman or Supergirl flying through the air. Inhale, exhale. We're gonna add some arm movement here. So now flip the, the palms so they're facing outwards and then bring them together, extend them long in front of you just like we were when we started. Palms facing outwards, opposite from each other, and scoop it back. So the arms and hands are parallel the rest of the body. Inhale, reach the arms forward. Exhale, scoop them back. Last one, extend the arms long in front of you, palms facing each other, and then set everything down. Ooh, a lot of good back work there. Good job, everybody. Inhale. Exhale. Now lying down here in complete prostration, flip the palms facing up and bring the hands together. And you can keep your forehead on the ground. And so the body is extended completely long and the palms are facing up and the pinkies are touching each other. The sides of the hands are touching each other. So in this posture, we are receiving the gift of our practice today. Whatever it is that the practice is opening up for you, be receptive to it. Soften the heart. Soften the breath, be receptive. What is the insight that you may be able to gain from today? Breathe in and let it go. All right, lift the head up slightly and bring the hands um, directly underneath the shoulders, tuck the toes and we're gonna Push up into the top of a push up. So plank pose. Inhale. Exhale. Breathe in. And breathe out. Push up into downward facing dog. And feel a little bit of release in the low back. Oh, sweet release of the low back from all that really good back strengthening work that we did with baby cobra and locust pose. Inhale, exhale. Now staying on um, your toes, slowly, slowly shift your weight forward and then begin to just drop the hips ever so slightly and come into a modified upward facing dog. So the shoulders relax down the back, the Thighs are elevated off the ground. And find your breath here, inhale. Exhale, you're really pressing the hands into the mat. The legs are straight and strong. You're reaching the chest forward through the gates of the arms. The neck is neutral. Gaze is directly in front of you. Inhale, downward facing dog. And 
exhale, modified upward facing dog. So shift the weight forward, drop the hips slightly, press the hands into the mat. Let's move through a few cycles of these on your own. So inhale, upward facing dog. Sorry, downward facing dog. Exhale, modified upward facing dog. Inhale, downward facing dog. And modified up dog. Just staying on your toes the entire time. And remember the balance between stira and sukha, effort and ease. See if you can find that point in between effort and ease, masculine and feminine, yin and yang, dark and light, slow breathing, methodical, so conscientious, so slow. All right, let's all meet in downward facing dog. And lift the right leg up, three-legged dog. Set the right foot in between the hands at the top of the mat and come into a low lunge. Go ahead and drop the left knee down, untuck the toes, inhale the hands up, Anjane Asana. So the left shin and the right foot are pressing into the mat belly button towards the spine, fingertips lift even as the shoulder blades relax down the back. Inhale, exhale. Now let's throw in a little twist here. So bring the left hand onto the outside of the right knee and swoop the right hand down onto the left thigh or you can wrap the right hand around the left waist. Inhale, elongate the spine, exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, exhale. Inhale back into Anjane Asana. And have your stance kind of wide. So toe heel to the right foot over to the right side of the mat. We're gonna come into lizard uh, pose on this side. So bring the hands down to the inside of the right foot. So let me switch my orientation here so you can see. So you can stay up here um, with both hands down on the mat, or if you want, you can come down onto the forearms, getting a nice hip opening here, and lengthen the spine. If you want, you can come onto the, let the right foot open up so that the pinky side edge of the foot is on the mat. And if you want a little bit more extra, tuck the left toes, lift the left knee up. Inhale. Exhale. Breathe in. And let it go. Our hips and like our hamstrings are really notorious at holding a lot of big emotions, often negative emotions. So we want to open them up and let them go. And our breath is kind and gentle release valve for us. So inhale and exhale, let it go. All right, set the left knee down if you aren't already there. Come up onto the hands and knees. Uh, bring both hands. I'm sorry, hands on either side of the right foot. And just bring the left knee up and then step the left foot to meet the right. And we'll just bring the right foot back. So we're just um, doing the other side now. So Anjane Asana, right knee down, untuck the left toes. There's a right angle in the left front knee. Inhale the hands up towards the sky. Breathe in. And let it go. Again, bring awareness to this posture. So maybe you can get a little bit more active in the arms. Maybe you can press the left foot and the right shin into the mat a little bit more. 
Maybe you can squeeze the core a little bit more. Go ahead and throw in your twist here. So right hand on the outside of the left knee, the left hand on the left thigh or wrap the left hand around the right waist. Inhale, lengthen the spine, exhale, twist to the left. Gaze is wherever is comfortable, the left side wall, maybe over the left shoulder. Again, feel rooted as well as feeling the upward energy through the crown of the head. Inhale, exhale. All right, inhale, uh, come back to facing forward and toe heel the left foot over to the left edge of the mat. I'm gonna switch my orientation again so you can see my hands. Bring both hands to the inside of the left foot, place the palms down. And if this is feeling good for you, if you're feeling plenty of opening here, hang out here. If you want a little bit more, I invite you to come down to the forearms. Feel that opening in the left hip joint in particular. If you want a little bit more, tuck the right toes and lift up the right knee. If you want a little bit of icing on this cake, open up the left foot and come to the pinky side edge of the left foot. Breathe in here. And you might notice one side is a little bit different from the other side. That's totally normal. Kind of relates to being kind of dominant in the right hand or the right foot or the left foot. So we want to just treat both sides equally, no judgment, just an awareness. And that's the same really for every posture. No judgment, no comparison, no force, no fight. Inhale and settle in. Breathe in and let it go. All right, come back onto your hands and have either hand on, uh, the hands on either side of the left foot, bring the right hand, right foot to meet the left at the top of the mat, forward fold. Here, pitch your weight slightly forward. Inhale, come up to a flat back so the hands can be on the shins, they can be on the thighs, fingertips on the ground. Just elongating the spine, crown of the head reaches in front of you, tailbone reaches behind you. Then exhale, forward fold again. Relax the shoulders down the back. Feel the flexion in the hip, in the hip points. And Remember to breathe, inhale and exhale. Since you're down here now, why don't you go ahead and grab the uh, big toes with your peace fingers, Padangustasana, big toe, asana, inhale, lengthen the spine, and then exhale, forward fold. You can bend the elbows, maybe guide the crown of the head a little bit closer, one centimeter closer to the ground. The chest comes one millimeter closer to the thighs. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, slowly roll on up, super slow. The head comes up last, vertebrae by vertebrae. Avoid that head rush. Gonna do a couple standing postures before we come back down. So let's do our tree pose. So shift your weight into your left foot and you can either do bonsai um, tree pose. So the toes are uh, on the ground, the heel is resting on the left or you can lift the sole of the right foot onto the side of the calf or Bring the sole of the left foot in, sorry, sole of the right foot into the inner left thigh. Hands in prayer, position in front of the heart. Focus your gaze on something that is not moving. This is called your drishti. 
Inhale, and exhale. And if you find that balance is hard, it's no biggie. If you fall out of the posture, just come right back. Inhale, exhale. Press the sole of the foot into the left leg and see if you can bring the right knee out just a little bit more. Belly button towards the spine. And if you want, go ahead and lift the arms up, making a V shape. And bring the index finger and the thumb together. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And set the right foot down. Let's go ahead and do the other side. So you know the three options. Go ahead and pick the one that is right for you. Weight into the right foot. Lift the left foot up and choose the setting that works for you today. Press the sole of that foot into the right leg. Hands in prayer position. Focus your drishti. Turn inwards. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, lift the arms up, making a V-shape with the arms. And go ahead and bring the index finger and the thumb together, pressing together ever so slightly. Lift the right kneecap up, belly button towards the spine. Relax the shoulders down the back. Soften the face. And breathe. Inhale and exhale, gently set it all down. Really good job. We're gonna do a couple more um, standing postures to find our balance. So um, option number one, uh, we're gonna work on the left side first or put your weight into your left foot and lift the right knee and give it a squeeze into the chest. And this is option one. Option two is lengthen the foot in front of you, the right foot and hold with both hands underneath the right hamstring, inhale, exhale. And final option is left hand on the left waist, grab the big toe with the peace fingers on the right hand, inhale. So you choose the setting for you, either squeezing the knee in, supporting the right leg long, or grabbing the big toe. Om three, om two, Om one, and gently set it down. Really good job. Let's do the other side. So weight into the right foot, lift up the left knee, give it a squeeze into the chest. Option one, option two, elongate the leg, support it uh, with two hands underneath the hamstring. This is really good right here. This is super hard um, as it is, or if you wanna go ahead, Grab the big toe with the beast fingers, right hand on the right hip. Om three, om two, om one, and set it down. Really good job. We're gonna do one more standing posture. We're gonna throw in a little twist here. So go ahead and put the weight into the left foot and lift up the right knee, squeeze it into the chest. And you can hold on to the right knee with the left hand and then open up the right hand to the right for a standing twist, inhale. This is option one. Option two is extend the right leg, support it with the left hand, the left hand holding underneath the, uh, the hamstring. Final option, grab the outside of the right foot and extend it long. Om three, om two, om one, Set it down. Really good job. That's super challenging. <laughs> really good. Let's do the other side, just even it out. So weight into the right foot, lift the left knee up, hold the right, uh, sorry, the left knee with the right hand and then twist open. And you can hang out here, gaze in front 
gaze to the side or gaze over the left shoulder. Option two, elongate the leg, support it underneath, really push that left foot into the wall, the invisible wall. And then option three, grab the outside of the foot and extend it long, inhale, exhale. Ohm two, ohm one. Really good job, everybody, set it down. Woo! Really good job, that's super hard. All right, let's go ahead and just do one um, prasarita padottanasana. So the legs are wide, the feet are parallel to the short edge of the mat. Uh, grab the hands behind you, interlace the fingers together, lift up the chest, activate the legs by lifting the kneecaps up onto the thigh, lifting the kneecaps up, squeezing the quadriceps onto the thigh bone, hinge from the hips, Lead with the chest, slowly come on down into a forward fold. This is Prasarita Padottanasana C. So lift the clenched hands towards the ceiling. Maybe they come up and over parallel to the ground. No biggie if they don't. I definitely do not. I do not have that shoulder flexibility, but I'm feeling really good right now. Inhale. Press the feet into the mat. Legs are active. Arms are active. Crown of the head reaching towards the ground. Hip flexion. Belly button towards the spine. Inhale. Exhale. Right, slowly come on up. Head comes up last. Avoid that head rush. Let's rotate the feet out and come into goddess pose, hands in prayer position. So there's external rotation in the hips. You're squatting down as low as you can go. Inhale the hands in prayer position. This goddess pose helps us to kind of cultivate our inner divine feminine. This is a quality that is so important today because there's a lot of toxic masculinity going around in the world. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, straighten the legs. I'm gonna take a quick breather and exhale, come back into your goddess pose one more time. Make sure the knees are not falling forward, the knees are coming back in space. Hands in prayer position, inhale, exhale, Om three, Om two, Om one. Really good job, let's come on out of that. And then let's just squat all the way down into Malasana, Yogi squat. And if this is challenging for you, you can go ahead and sit on a block. If not, um, if you're good here, make sure that you are not dumping forward, that your chest is coming on up, the spine is straight and long. Inhale, exhale. Place the right hand on the ground and lift the left hand up for an open twist. If you wanna come into a bind, go ahead and reach the left hand behind and grab the right hand as it's wrapped around the leg. Lay the Head back, gaze towards the ceiling, inhale, exhale. Come back to center, left hand on the ground, right hand extends up towards the sky, open twist. If you wanna come into a bind, yogi's choice, inhale, exhale. Breathe in and let it go. All right, come back to center. And this is the least graceful transition in modern yoga. Just sit your butt down <laughs> and extend the legs wide. And we're gonna come into a wide-legged forward bend. So the toes and the knees face the ceiling. Externally rotate the hips one more time. And then now slowly just creep your fingertips either down the legs or in front of you, yogi's choice. 
I'm going to go in front of me. So I'm just crawling these fingers forward. You can't, I'm kind of off cam now, but keep the, the toes and the knees facing forward and then just come forward as far as gravity is going to allow you today. And maybe just put in a little bit more inhale, lengthen the spine, exhale, fold forward. Breathe in and let it go. Om three, om two, om one. And come on up. Let's go ahead and just bring um, the legs long in front of you. Staff pose, Dandasana. So the hands are beside the hips. Inhale, set up straight and tall, flex the toe, flex the foot so the toes are coming towards you. Lift the kneecaps up, belly button towards the spine. Inhale, exhale, point the toes. And flex the toes. This is giving, and point the toes. This is giving us a floss to our nervous system. Just like we should floss our teeth every day, we should be flossing our nervous system every day. Point the toes and flex the toes. Really good job. And you can relax and see if you can just lift yourself up a tiny bit and bring your hips back just like one centimeter and set it down. We're just trying to shift the, the tilt of the hips so that they're tilting forward. The, the hip structure is not tilting backward because when you do Paschimottanasana or forward seated fold, your hips are orienting backwards. It's really hard to come forward. So by just doing that little lift up, maybe you can feel a forward tilt to the hip structure just a little bit. Inhale the hands up and exhale forward fold. So the hands can come to the ground, the shins, maybe they grab the tops of the feet, Maybe they grab the heels, wherever you are. Lift the kneecaps up, feel flexion in the hip, relax the shoulders down the back. Crown of the head reaches forward, inhale, exhale, fold forward. Wherever it is today is wherever it's supposed to be. The practice is different every day. The body feels different every day. What's important to notice is just how you're choosing to show up into these challenging asanas. They, again, are a window into the inner self. So are you meeting this challenging moment with frustration? Are you meeting it with relaxation? Just notice, inhale, lengthen the spine, exhale, forward fold. No force, no fight, no competition. Inhale, slowly come on up. Oh, really good job. And then slowly lay down all the way. Sweet Shavasana, our final resting pose. Ooh. Tuck the chin slightly so the back of the head rests on the mat. Palms facing up. Inhale, we'll take three breaths together. And exhale, soften. Inhale. And release. Feel yourself sinking deeper into the mat. Last one together, breathe in. And come to complete. We relaxation. We'll be in Shavasana just for a few short moments. Soften the eyes and the eye sockets. Relax the muscles of the face. Release the tongue.
Notice the quality of the thoughts. Notice feeling in the body. Maybe a gentle buzzing sensation throughout all the cells. Notice the quality of the breath. Slowly begin now to bring awareness back to the body by wiggling your fingers and toes. Roll the feet and the legs softly from side to side. And bring the knees up so that the soles of the feet are on the ground. And gently roll over to the right side. And you can use your right arm as a pillow. We're just passing through fetal pose. Your left hand may be on the ground beside the body. Gently press into the left hand and push yourself up. You can keep your eyes closed if you want. And come into Sukhasana or Pleasant Pose where we started our practice just about 55 minutes ago. And again, I invite you to soften the gaze or close the eyes. Maybe you feel a little bit different from when we started in this exact same pose earlier. Notice again the breath flowing in and out of the body. Imagine now a soft white light in the center of your chest. This is a warm and healing light. And the light is slowly expanding through the chest cavity, extending down the torso, slowly filling up through the fingertips and down the toes. This soft white light is filling up your entire body. Yoga helps us to bring unity where there is separation. I invite you to remember your sankalpa or your intention at the beginning of this practice. And Maybe you feel a little bit closer towards that intention. Imagine now this soft white light begins to extend beyond the skin and begins to fill up the room, begins to fill up the entire neighborhood. The light is connecting me to you in San Francisco all the way to Oakland. This warm healing light begins to spread across the state, across the country, and slowly begins to envelop the entire world. May we all feel connected. May we all be healed. May we all be united. Bring the hands together in prayer position, lift them up to your third eye, which is the space in between the eyebrows, inviting true sight to be able to see things as they really are. And with that sight, to be able to meet every moment with loving compassion for others and for yourself. Bow forward. And come on up. 